Well, just weeks into our investigation, we spoke with nationally recognized experts on police training based in Memphis, Tennessee. The very same experts Cleveland police are now turning to. It's a city where the blues grew into an icon and a motel balcony that witnessed the assassination of another. But 25 years ago, it also became home to the nation's leading center for police training and the mentally ill. This is Memphis, Tennessee, and what we found here reveals a lot about Cleveland police, excessive force, and an ongoing Department of Justice investigation. We coined a phrase many years ago, CIT is more than just training. Major Sam Cochran is a retired Memphis cop. He helped the department launch CIT, Crisis Intervention Teams, the nation's first program teaching cops how to successfully treat the mentally ill instead of arresting them. We have an individual that has an illness of the brain. I'm afraid some of the attention is get that person off the street and put that person in jail. I must go back. I go back. I go back. I knew I had to keep my hands in front of my body and away from my weapon. Training videos are used to teach cops how to de-escalate potentially violent scenes. Let me go, let me go, hopefully I'm going to change the system. Let me go, 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 let me for the last 10 years. Verbal de-escalation will allow the officer to take control with less risk for injury to all parties. 40 hours of classroom training, plus role-playing real-life crises. We're here to help you, sweetie. We're not here to hurt you. We're just here to find out what's wrong. I feel stressed. But police were unable to calm Tanisha Anderson last November. She died in custody while handcuffed and restrained. If a police department provides that, 40-hour training. Is that sufficient? No. The Department of Justice found serious flaws in how the mentally ill in Cleveland are treated by police. In this DOJ report, excessive force against persons who are mentally ill or in crisis, including cases where the officers were called exclusively for a welfare check. What red flags does that suggest to you? As what I just mentioned, probably a level of confidence, um, lack of confidence. Cochran believes Cleveland's program fails to involve multiple community agencies. What are some of those weaknesses that you suspect? I, I suspect that um, CIT may have become more of a training program and not some of the um, layers that make CIT successful. Including command level police officers. To what extent is that nurturing happening uh, in other areas of the department? Uh, does the frontline supervisors or all levels of supervisors uh, understand the role of CIT? CIT is more than training. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. What's lacking in the department? Well, I don't want to say anything's lacking in the department. Instead, right. Cleveland's public safety director points to more than 6,000 calls for mental health assistance last year. Two-thirds involved potentially violent disturbances or suicide. And those situations and those letters that we get weekly for officers doing just an outstanding job because they were understanding and caring for that particular family. But despite more than 6,000 calls involving the mentally ill, the man who now heads up the mental health agency training cops makes a stunning revelation. In a given year, how many times does the Cleveland Police Department meet with you on a regular basis? Well, uh, on a regular basis, on a regular, probably very, very few times. How many times over that period of time would you say the department or its representative or yourself has met with uh, Bill Denahan's office on a regular basis in sit downs to discuss the program? There again, I can't give you a definitive number, but I know it was numerous times that represented, I, I personally met with Mr. Danahan, Director Numerous Danahan, times. 
and, and representatives from the division of police. 